Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Flash for the Win. Welcome back to another StarCast TV commentary. Today, we're going to be watching a best of one game here between the Blue Zerg Larva versus the Brown Terran Sharp on Neo Sylphid. Both these players, excellent players. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sharp, a very consistent Terran player. Uh, one of, I, I'd probably say, top three top four Terran um, obviously the best Terrans are Flash and, and Light uh, but I would probably put Sharp right after those two players in terms of uh, the Terran uh, skill Larva as we all know is a very good Zerg player um, but I mean these days the Zerg lineup in the professional leagues the Korean professional leagues have been very deep especially with the return of effort from military uh, we're gonna see an extreme powerhouse of Zerg players so we're definitely gonna see where Larva is gonna fit in on that tier list essentially of those Zerg players I mean he's got a bunch of players to deal with he's got Sulky, Effort, um, obviously Larva's up there Uh, Zero. I think Zero is probably the best Zerg player right now. I can't believe I almost forgot Zero. Uh, he's such a low-key player that um, it's sometimes easy to forget about him. But yeah, I mean, we have a lot, a lot of S-tier Zerg players, I've got to say, and, and it's going to be really tough here for uh, the rest of the races to, to compete with them, especially for Protoss players right now. They're just struggling against these Zerg players, and, and it's not really a, a Protoss player that really generates uh, supreme confidence in their play. I think that you know, Bisu is a good Zerg, pl uh, sorry, Protoss player, Zerg player, um, but, you know, he's kind of fallen off a little bit, he's he's kind of lost his touch on the game, um, and obviously Rain, Rain's a great PvT and PvP player, but his PvZ doesn't exactly exude confidence, like when I watch him play, I don't expect him to beat uh, the, the better Zerg players out there. So we're, I guess we're looking for a good Protoss player um, to kind of fill in those those gaps to uh, deal with the, the Zerg Menace right now. And obviously Terran, Light, a uh, very good Terran for Zerg player. Flash is Flash. Um, and Sharp is, is a very good Terran for Zerg player himself. So we'll have to see what it's going to be going up with. Anyways, uh, going to this game here, Sharp did manage to first scout Larva. So he does not need to produce any Marines out of this barracks. Very standard here. For those who don't know, um, you go for the 11 barracks. And if you scout the Zerg first and manage to see that he is going for a 12 hatchery build, you don't need to make any Marines. You go straight into your 15 command center right after your barracks finishes. Uh, and then drop your supply depot. And then go ahead and start building Marines and SCVs out of your uh, command center and barracks. It's Terran's. Every, every Terran's... Uh, favorite thing to see is when you when you see the zerg player go for that 12 hatchery you can just th throw down your command center as fast as possible uh, but okay here 20 supply sh usually time for terrans to add on that second barracks especially these days when they're going for the uh two racks academy builds which is again standard against the fast two hatch layer Zerglings out now here for Larva. He is going for that fast layer. Six Zerglings out now, and we're going to see how well he's going to be able to utilize these Zerglings for pressure. And uh, immediately seeing those six Zerglings, Sharp is going to try to throw down that bunker in time. Probably get an SCV block here as well, or maybe just getting another scout out there. Uh, but three Marines the, with the bunker finish should be able to hold off these six Zerglings fairly easily. And the six Lings, uh, I don't think they managed to sell, see that SCV. No, they did not. So that's very, very well done there for Sharp to get out that SCV. And this is something that um, both Terrans and Pearls players need to do in this matchup is make sure they can see what exactly the Zerg player is going for. Is it going to be that fast Spire? And oh, the Zerg are going to try to go for a surround here on these to these Marines. One of the Marines does go down. Two of the Marines go down. This was a critical mistake here from Sharp. I'm not exactly sure why he pulled those Marines and then uh, sent them back out to the bunker. Speed finished right when he go went for that play. And now there's going to be three speedlings inside the base. One speedling does manage to get picked off by an SCV, but these lings are going to be in the base here. And luckily, you know, SCVs are a little bit bulkier than their probe counterparts. One more link. One of them going down, but Larva is streaming Zerglings across the map right now, trying to sense weakness here uh, from Sharp's position, but uh, I think that this is a little bit of a mistake here. Sharp does have enough SCVs pulled. Um, he will manage to pick off a couple of these Marines. Bad micro here from Sharp, managing to lose both of those Marines again. Uh, and now Larva is still continuously trying to stream these Zerglings across the map. We'll end up picking off that scout as well here from Sharp. Um, but gotta say, you know, this was uh, definitely a critical mistake here from Sharp. And uh, with the Spire halfway done, you know, he's not going to have that many Marines here to deal with these Mutas when they first come out. And it's going to be really difficult for him to hold on. 
Um, Larva's gonna have a field day with those Mutalisks, especially when there's not gonna be uh, missile turrets in the best positions here with these Zerglings as well, chasing these SCVs off of the natural mineral line. And this is looking worse and worse here for Sharp as this game continues to progress. Now, if had, had he secured that natural expansion just a little bit better before he tried to go out there and be a little bit greedy, pick off some of those hold position Zerglings, I think that he would have been in a much better position, but instead went a little bit... Um, Cavalier and went after the Zerglings really trying to get some free damage off and I mean professional players You're gonna see them try to go for that little bit of damage because you know, obviously every little bit of um, Of an advantage that you can secure, you know, even one Zergling is enough to make sure that you can uh, Find advantages to win the game, but a little bit um, overconfident there with that small push from him and that's going to cost them. Larva now getting that third base, obviously, from the two-hatch play. He's going to be expanding behind this Mutalisk pressure that's going to be coming out here. We've got quite a bit of these Mutas. Um, plus one upgrade as well coming out from the Spire. Scan's going to see the Spire. He's going to see the, the eggs morphing. Should see that Mutalisk pop out. And so he knows that Mutas are, <coughs> excuse me, are coming out right now. But Sharp is broke. He lost quite a bit of SCVs there in that attack. And, and he's going to be really hard-pressed to afford a lot of these missile turrets here. He's going to try to secure his reinforcement line first with these barracks. But, I mean, he's only got one so far right now at the natural base. The Mutas are going to come in here. Will they be able to pick up the SCV building that missile turret right now? That missile turret is going to manage to finish. Um, but we're going to see that SCV count start to dwindle. And we can see already the worker count is already almost equaled right now from that initial link harass. As well as picking up a couple of those SCVs here from the Mutalisks. And right now, Sharp is put in a, in a really dangerous position here. Does he want to try to move out? And, you know, obviously, every Terran wants to try to move out here against two hatchery play because, you know, Zergs aren't going to have as much of an army in compared to a three hatch play. Uh, but it's hard because, you know, if you move out, then Mulas can try to backstab you and really go in there, dive hard onto those missile turrets and try to pick, uh, pick them off. Now, Larva d himself does have to be careful. You know, he doesn't have that many Mulas out just yet. Uh, he is starting to build more back at home. And he's got to wait for the reinforcement Mutalisk uh, before he's able to really contest against this uh, Terran army. The Terran army is significant. It is um, getting that plus one upgrade, I think, from the engineering bay. Yeah, it's about halfway done right now. The uh, marine range upgrade. Stim is, is just about to finish as well. Uh, we're going to see that uh, range upgrade also probably uh, start. Unless he went for range first. And that might be a nice adaptation there. Um, but here comes the Stim. Picked off one of the Mutalisks already. So a nice pick off there from Sharp, just trying to keep that Mutalisk count down as low as possible while he slowly moves out across the map. And he's doing a great job here. I do think that he has range, actually. I think he went for range first before Stim, and I think that's an interesting adaptation. I personally have never seen that myself. Uh, that being said, I haven't watched as much StarCraft lately. Um, so interesting to see that maybe now the, the meta is to go for range first. It helps also defending against Lurkers. Obviously against Lurkers, you do want that range upgrade first before Stim. Uh, but now we see that here's that backstab uh, attempt here from these Mutalisk, and he's going to try to go for something here. But that being said, there are four barracks here back at home for Sharp, so his reinforcement line is going to be uh, extreme. And he's just going to wait for that moment when uh, his initial army on the map is big enough, and they can reinforce with the secondary army, which is exactly what's happening right now. The Marines now coming out here, but are there enough Mutas here to destroy this army here from Sharp? Yes, it will be, just barely enough here to clean this up. And uh, now these Mutas are going to reign supreme here out on the map. And that means that this third base here for Larva is going to be untouched for another, uh, at least another, you know, three to four minutes. Does Sharp have any tech behind this? No. Sharp is really committing to this four barracks. And this is almost all in. Okay, the factory is coming up. Sorry, it's over here at the, at the, at the natural. Um, but... You know, his tech is quite late because of the fact that you do add on those additional barracks. You know, you're spending a lot more minerals there that could have gone into more tech. You're adding on um, because you're obviously getting more and more marines. You do need to uh, buy more me medics and that, that means more gas that you're not spending on tech. Uh, and these Mutas now with the plus one uh, attack upgrade, uh, and now they're at the significant count. I mean, he is just ripping through these Marines. There's only one missile turret left here that would get one shot by a uh, full group of Mutas. And if he managed to pick off that one last missile turret, he could just stream in reinforcement Mitas uh, until the game ends. And that's something he might do right now. Yeah, he's going to go right for that missile turret. And uh, there's not much left out here for Sharp. I'm not sure if he can hold on for much longer here. Uh, the Mitas are streaming across the map here for Larva. And uh, I think he's done. I think Larva's broken through. Sharp, you know, made a little bit of a mistake. Again, a little bit over eager trying to push out there. And... Uh, 
Marva is just going to be able to win this game, I think. He's going to pick up all these SMBs. No missile turrets for you, my friend. And then once the meters camp over the production, it's really almost impossible for Terrence to come back, especially with a Zerg player with as good of meter micro as Larva does. And um, yeah, I mean, he, he has no Marines left right now. He's only got SMBs. And there is the GG. Sharp leaving the game. And uh, Larva is going to manage to take this best of one game. So really done, well done there by Sharp and, or by Larva and Sharp, you know, just a little bit over eager at some points in the game, just trying to eke out those small advantages. But maybe he felt like his hand was forced, had it was forced to go for this uh, four barracks aggression style uh, and try to push out as fast as possible, knowing that Larva is going to be teching up quite quickly as well as having that third gas um, at the third base. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and uh, we'll see you guys for the next Starcast TV replay. See you guys then. Bye bye.